Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of slope and y-intercept. This is standard 8.4c in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 35 off the 2019 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we have a table here, shows the linear relationship between the number of hours that Francis worked. So I'm going to put an X right here and the amount of money that Francis earned Y. And so based on the table, how much did Francis earn per hour? Well, we can see here that we've got, you know, 1750 for about uh, for 1.25 hours, 5250 for 3.75. We don't, what we don't have is, we don't have any really simple one hour, two hour, three hour, just whole number for integers uh, for our number of hours work. They're going to give us decimals because it's going to be too easy if we have just a, you know, for one hour and then they give you the amount earned because that would be your rate right there. And that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for our unit rate of the amount of uh, money they earn per hour. And so we could also look at that as our slope. If we were to graph this with y and x, we would use direct variation here, right? Because there is going to be no y-intercept. Because if you have zero hours worked, like we can extend this, you're not going to get any money. Uh, so we use the y equals kx direct variation, which is just a it's just a version of this y equals mx plus b. We just use this when we know that there's not going to be any y-intercept. If you don't work, you don't get any money. And even though that also makes sense, there's nothing in this uh, story problem that says that they have they start out with a certain amount of money. So how could we do that? Well, uh, we could do slope, right? Slope, in this case, we're looking at the k, equals the uh, change in y over the change in x. That's the y over the rise over run, so we could do two x coordinates as my denominator, subtract them, two y coordinates as my numerator, subtract them. So if I really wanted to, right, I could subtract that, right? I could do, let's see my y coordinates, so I could do 52.5 minus 17.5, that's going to be my y coordinates. Then I could do my x coordinates 3.75 minus 1.25. And so what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 35 over 2.5. But if I wanted to, and then I just need to divide that. If I wanted to, I can actually do it a little bit smarter. And I can just could have just taken this right here. I could have just taken my 1750, right? And I could have said, you know what my other xy is going to be? It's going to be this zero that I know was there, minus zero, which is just 1750. 125 minus zero, which is just 125. So I would just get 17.5 over 1.25. You can do that when you know it goes to the origin is proportional. And guess what? Did you know that these two are proportional, right? If you just take your 35 divided by 2, your 2.5 divided by 2, you're going to get the same thing. So either way, we're going to need to divide, but you know what? That's going to be a little bit easier, so let's just divide that. Let's just divide 2.5 into 35. When we divide, we don't want any decimals in our divisor, so we're going to just add uh, 0 right there to 35 to make it 25. So 25 goes into 35 once, and look at that, 25 goes into 100 four times. Pretty simple, once you know what you're looking for there. If we would have divided 125 into 17.5, we would have gotten the same answer. Obviously we have this trick right here, look at that 1750 staring at us right there, but that is not what we want. Our answer here is going to be B.